If you have $1,000 to spend on a new GPU, should you buy an NVIDIA RTX 4080 Super or AMD RX 7900 XDX? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In this UPC FC series, we've been helping you make the right choice by pitting two components against each other in the PC Octagon to see who wins. In this video, our focus will be on reference model high-end GPUs, with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XDX in the red corner, taking on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super in the blue corner. As you know by now, I always like to over-deliver in my videos, so in addition to showing you benchmarks across 16 games at three different resolutions, I am also going to walk you through how to overclock your GPU so you can make the most of your purchase. It's really not rocket science, or as difficult as many so-called experts make it out to be, so before the main event gets started, let's jump straight into overclocking. You can overclock a GPU different ways and with many different tools. The process that I will walk you through in this video is the approach that I've developed and modified over a long period of time to ensure that you get a stable overclock. Given that software control of voltage has essentially been eliminated from modern GPUs, there is basically no way to damage your card using this approach. So it's something I would encourage you to try. One important point to understand before attempting to overclock your GPU is that your result results will vary based on the quality of your silicon. Some people will get lucky and get a golden sample chip that can overclock extremely well, and some will get unlucky and see some very minor results from overclocking. This is called the silicon lottery because the silicon quality you get when buying a CPU or GPU is essentially a roll of the dice. That said, you will never know unless you give it a shot. So this is the process that I use. Step one, you will first need software to adjust the GPU clock speed and memory clock speed. The two primary parameters that need to be adjusted to overclock your GPU. If you have an AMD GPU, then you can conveniently use the AMD Adrenaline Edition software that installs with your drivers to adjust these variables. The controls are located under performance and tuning. If you look under GPU, you have a tuning control area where you have a lot of different presets that you should definitely try. But the one we are interested in is under manual tuning where you can select custom to give you full control. If you have an Nvidia GPU, regardless of brand, you can use a tool like MSI Afterburner or use the manufacturer tweaking software that was developed for your card. So if you have an ASUS GPU, for example, then you should consider using GPU Tweak 3. One caution, make sure you download the software from the manufacturer directly to avoid accidentally installing malware. For the purposes of this tutorial, I will use MSI Afterburner, which I consider to be one of the best overclocking tools for Nvidia GPUs. Step two, now to have some fun. This is trial and error. So it's simple, but you need to be patient and do it in relatively small increments. The first thing you should do before starting the tests is to move the power limit slider as far as it will go to the right. It will typically be linked to a temperature limit, but I wouldn't suggest setting that any higher than about 90 degrees Celsius. You really shouldn't get anywhere close to that if your card cooling solution is working well. Also, for the purpose of this tutorial, set your fan speed to auto. I will do a more comprehensive tutorial on setting fan curves for your case, radiators, pumps, and GPU in the future. The first piece of software I use is called Unigen Heaven which is a benchmark software. It's a little dated, but it's free and it's a great way to get initial GPU clocks set. Start by adjusting the core clock in small increments of 25 megahertz. Hit apply and then run heaven. What you are looking for are artifacts appearing on screen. When you see artifacts like these, then your overclock settings are unstable. Once you get to a point of seeing artifacts, you should back off by about 25 megahertz and save that core clock speed. Then you can move on to adjusting the memory clock. You can adjust this in larger increments of around 50 megahertz. Unfortunately, Heaven isn't the best tool for testing GPU memory stability, but it will give you an upper limit. What I really like about using Heaven to start is that you can adjust your clocks, save and rerun the tool without having to reboot constantly. So it saves you a lot of time. Once you get artifacts or the program freezes, then back off to the last known stable run and save your settings. Congratulations, you have an initial overclock. Step three, with your initial overclock loaded, you can now test with another piece of free Unigen software called Superposition Benchmark, which will stress your memory overclock. Select Performance, 4K Optimize, and DirectX as shown, and then hit Run. If the benchmark doesn't complete or has artifacts, then I recommend backing off on your memory overclock in 25 megahertz increments. If it completes, then we can move on to the next step. 
Step four, at this point, I like to switch across to 3D Mark, which is not free and costs around $35 on Steam, but you can typically find it on sale for much less. It's only $7 at the time of filming this video, so it's a great deal. It is well worth the investment because it has multiple benchmarking tools that help you establish and refine your GPU overclock. The first tool that I like to use is Speedway. If it fails to complete, I back off on my core clock first in 25 megahertz increments until it passes. Then record the score and go back to the original core clock and try decreasing my memory clock by 50 megahertz increments to see if I can get it to complete by just adjusting memory. Each time it completes a full pass, I record the score. To find the best combination of core clock and memory clock, I compare the scores to see which one is higher. Once I have my max performance settings established, I then move on to Port Royal. At this point, don't be surprised if Port Royal fails to complete. If it fails, then dial back the core clock by 10 MHz and retest. You can also dial back the memory clock in 20 MHz increments, but do one or the other. Don't change them both at the same time. Once I pass Port Royal, I do a final test in TimeSpy Extreme. If I'm able to pass the 3D Mark suite of GPU benchmarks, then I feel very confident about my overclock settings. Before moving on to the final step, it's worth running Speedway and Port Royal a few more times, comparing your score at different overclock combinations to see what type of performance boost you're able to achieve. I usually test around the max overclock in small increments just to make sure that I'm extracting everything I can and that I didn't go too far. Sometimes you'll find by backing off a little on your overclock, you can achieve a higher score. That typically means you went too far and are on the edge of stability. Step five, congratulations, you've successfully extracted more free performance from your GPU. The final step in the process is all about making sure that your overclock is stable. You may be asking yourself what stable means, so let's discuss that and how we test for stability later in the video. As mentioned earlier, the battle today is between two reference model high-end GPUs, with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XDX in the red corner, taking on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super in the blue corner. The test system being used to run the benchmarks is my AMD-based open bench table with the following components. For the CPU, we have an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D. For the motherboard, we have a Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master. For RAM, we have G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo RGB 32GB DDR5 6000 at CL30. For storage, we have a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. For the CPU cooler, we have an EVGA CLCX 360mm AIO. For the PSU, we have a Gigabyte GP AP 1200PM 1200W Platinum Power Supply. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. All testing was performed with the 4080 Super at default out-of-the-box settings and the 7900XDX at the Rage preset. I made this choice because the AMD Adrenaline software offers tuning presets, something that Nvidia doesn't do but something I believe they should consider adding moving forward. These settings also avoid any issue with Silicon Lottery, given that they should run stable on virtually all reference 7900XDX and 4080 Super GPUs. With the GPUs ready to go, let's check the benchmarks. But before we do, I think it's only appropriate to introduce this the right way. Over to you, Bruce. And now, it's time! Introducing the components fighting for Blackbird PC Tech Benchmark Supremacy. In the blue corner, we have the champion. In the red corner, we have the challenger. Who will win this battle royale? Stay tuned to find out.
As I mentioned earlier in the video, the final step in overclocking your GPU is to test the stability of the overclock. But what does that really mean? This can vary based on your needs. Some people think successfully booting into Windows is stable enough. But to me, stable means that your GPU will function without any issues regardless of what you throw at it. So the final test that I run to ensure stability is to run Fermark for 30 to 60 minutes. You can monitor the GPU temp in real time and see if your system freezes at any point during the test. If it passes and your temps are reasonable, say below about 85 to 90 degrees Celsius, then your GPU overclock should be stable. You can always test your GPU further and there is no guarantee that over time, an overclock that was stable doesn't become unstable. But if that ever happens, you can simply go back to default settings and follow this process again. Something I typically do for daily running once I discover my stable overclock is to intentionally back off by about 25 megahertz on the core clock and about 100 megahertz on the memory clock to ensure that I stay well away from the edge. That will give you some room for thermal paste deterioration and avoid having to go through this process again in the future. You can even rerun some of the benchmarks to see just how much backing off a little reduces your performance. My guess is that more than likely it will not be meaningful. A bonus tip and something I always do after overclocking is to open a command prompt by typing cmd in search and running the sfc slash scan now command. This will fix any issues with your operating system that may have arisen during the overclocking process. In this video, we pitted two reference model high-end GPUs against each other, with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XDX in the red corner, taking on the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 Super in the blue corner. As you can see from the round by round results, it was a very narrow victory for the 4080 Super, with only two wins separating the competitors across 20 hard fought rounds. Given how close the average gaming performance was across 16 games, it's tough to recommend one card over the other based purely on performance, since the margins are not meaningfully different. When we look at power efficiency, however, this shows a very different story, with the 4080 Super achieving its performance at significantly lower power draws. Advantage Nvidia. Given that the performance is so close, what happens when we look at cost? After the recent $200 price reduction from Nvidia for the 4080, the current price for both cards is now exactly the same. If you convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 4K, then the cards are essentially tied, with the 4080 Super eking out a very small victory. If you are now to rerun these tests with the two ray tracing titles removed, the 7900 XDX shows just how good it is at rasterization, with a distinct performance advantage across all all resolutions. The problem for AMD is that if you're spending $1,000 on a GPU, you want it to be good at everything, not just rasterization performance. So I am not sure how anyone could recommend the reference RX 7900 XDX at these current prices. I think AMD should officially drop the price of the 7900 XDX by around $100 to better compete with the 4080 Super. In my opinion, the increased VRAM for the 7900 XDX doesn't really offset the 4080 Super's superior power efficiency and implementation of ray tracing. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Ultimate PC Component Fighting Championship Battle Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes as other components battle it out in the PC Octagon. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future components that you would like to see go head to head. Bye for now.